So what I want to do over here is uh, the place where we left off last time was a discussion of what happens when we have edges with delays on them, right? So I want to sort of go over that in a little bit more detail because that is the crucial part of that determines how a hardware architecture, uh, folded architecture looks like. Okay. So to start, let's just consider a simple two node system. There are two actors U and V uh, joined by an edge with no delays on it. Okay. Now this N equal to two that I've written over here is essentially what I would call the folding order. Right. What I mean by folding order is this is the number of time steps in the periodic repeating pattern. Okay. And with n equal to 2 as the folding order, effectively what we have is that the when as time progresses as 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, the phase goes just alternating 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Right. So this is because of the fact that n is equal to 2. Okay. Now what that means in this case is that we basically have, I mean, uh, you know, the n equal to 2 is a separate thing that is related to the hardware architecture, the hardware implementation. But the what I've drawn over here, the u0 to v0, u1 to v1, u2 to v2 and so on, those are actually capturing the dependencies that the original data flow graph has, right? So in other words, it's saying that the zeroth firing or activation of u will then be used for the zeroth firing of V, right? So the dependencies are direct, U0 to V0 and so on. Which means that if I was to choose a particular order, right? So TU is equal to zero and TV is equal to one, right? So these are the two numbers. I basically have two choices, TU equal to zero, TV equal to one, or the other way around, right? TV equal to zero, TU equal to one. This is assuming that I basically have only uh, one hardware on which both U and V are being executed, right? And further, I'm also assuming sort of implicitly over here that U and V basically each take one unit of time to execute. Okay? So that is sort of an implicit assumption over here. Now, as far as this is concerned, basically what it says is, I need to make sure that U0 finishes before V0, which is fine. You know, that's perfectly uh, satisfied by this particular uh, sequence of operations, u0 happens before v0, similarly u1 happens before v1 and so on, right? Incidentally, because of the way that I've done it, u0 also happens before u1, but if you look at the original graph, that was not a requirement, right? That was not part of the dependencies that we have over there. The other alternative is that I choose to your tu equal to 1 and tv equal to 0. Okay? What happens then? Then the architecture in the sequence looks like this, right? T v is equal to 0. So v0 gets scheduled at phase 0 and then the u0 gets scheduled at phase 1 okay? and so on. It goes on like this. right? Is there a problem over here? Yes. You can see that the dependencies are from u0 to v0. That is u0 is supposed to have finished before v0 starts. Whereas the sequence I have <coughs> puts them in exactly the opposite order. So basically this firing sequence, right? This order, this folding uh, sequence is not acceptable. It is invalid for this particular graph. Okay, that's why I put a red cross mark against it. Okay. Now, on the other hand, what if I had one delay element between U and V, right? Then the dependencies that need to be satisfied are U0 to V1. That is to say, the output of U0 is being used for V1. Well, whether or not the output is used, what it means is that u0 has to complete before v1 can start. That is essentially the meaning of that edge, right? Does it mean that v is using the data provided by u? Maybe, or it might mean something else, that u does some computation which has some side effect and only after that v is allowed to proceed. Okay? So whichever way it is, the point is that edge only indicates one thing, that v1 can only start after u0 has completed. Okay. So if we move forward with that, I can now draw an equivalent DAG. A DAG is a directed acyclic graph. Right. We have discussed this earlier. And 
how do i get this dag i basically say that any edge which has a delay element on it i delete it from the graph <clears throat> right so i mean in principle even the original graph the u followed by v with one delay on it is a dag right it is a directed graph and it is acyclic but the actual dag that we are interested in is after removing the delay elements and in this case basically what it says is now if you look at it u and v with respect to what happens within one iteration they can happen in either order right u and v are not dependent on each other within the context of one iteration the blue arrow on the other hand basically says that the output of u in the present iteration is used by v in the next iteration okay so now what happens if i use the same sequence that i had last time that is du equal to 1 and dv equal to 0 remember this was the one that was invalid previously right but if i now look at this what i find is the sequence same v0 u0 v1 u1 now the dependency is from u0 to v1 right and from u1 to v2 and so on which is valid there's no problem over here right so in other words the du equal to 1 dv equal to 0 which was invalid in the previous case has now become valid because of the fact that i have an extra d element between u and v which means that the dependency has been pushed across one iteration okay what about what about the other case t u equal to 0 t v equal to 1 right the question is is this still a valid folding sequence right and if we write out the sequence of firing basically what we see is you know now u0 happens in at phase 0 uh, and v0 happens at phase 1 and so on okay is there any dependency violation over here no because as you can see essentially the output of u0 is now used by v1 v1 happens after u0 and that's really all that we care about okay there is no dependency violation over here there is one tricky thing which is that v2 is now dependent on u1 and the way that the sequence of firing is happening is u1 actually happens before v1 right which means that you know what happened to the old value produced by u0 do i still have it when i am trying to execute v1 right that is one thing that i need to take care of when i am actually implementing something like this okay so what does that mean it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the sequence it only means that i need to ensure that my data is present for long enough how do i do that what does that actually mean in order to understand that right we need to sort of take a closer look at what happens in the hardware implementation okay and what i mean by that is how does this actually look when it is actually put on to hardware units how are the wires connected together and so on and to explain that i'm going to assume that there is some kind of a processing element p right so this is some processing element that is capable of executing either u type or v type operations right so in other words it could be a cpu and it has function calls for both u and v present in it right or it might be a multiply accumulate unit that is capable of doing whatever kinds of operations u and v are so you know it doesn't really matter what it is as long as p is capable of doing both okay now what i'm saying is the output of p is basically going to the the hardware unit that i'm looking at is p followed by a register and what i mean by this p followed by a register is actually saying that this is the output of p is directly being stored into a register uh, sorry i need to clarify one thing i mean you know uh, this is not really uh, or here we are not really talking about implementation at the software level right so the individual p and uh, the u and v and so on are individual operations that are happening within a single clock cycle or you know multiple clock cycles but directly need to go into register so these rectangles that i am drawing over here are actually they need to be physical registers capable of storing data right so this dashed line box that i have drawn over there right essentially is a sort of you can think of it as a black box which contains some computation whose output is then saved into a register okay. so the implication of this p followed by this rectangle is to say that p performs some computation and that computation is then saved into a register ready for 
and you know basically that output becomes ready during the next clock cycle at its output okay which means that if i want to perform the two kinds of operations u and v i will need to have some kind of a multiplexer on the input side to make sure that the correct input goes into p appropriately at the right time instant and now the connection basically looks like this right whenever the tu is equal to 1 right that is to say when the multiplexer input select signal is equal to 1 i have that there's no input needed for un to execute so i can just basically leave it blank or tie it off or you know i mean i don't have i don't care what the input is going in at that point because my assumption is that the u computation is happening without considering that input so i don't care what input goes into the multiplexer at that stage but on the other hand when tv for the zero what happens is that i have this feedback connection right the u n minus 1 whatever was computed in the previous cycle is going to be fed back and used as input in order to compute the vn okay so that is essentially what this architecture looks like okay so over here this is a physical register this is some computational logic and then of course we have the multiplexer that takes care of separating out the uh, different phases of the clock okay so far so good what happens with the other architecture that is to say when i consider tu is equal to 0 and tv is equal to 1 right we have seen that essentially the uh, sequence looks like this right that is to say it goes u0 to v1 u uh, u1 to v2 and so on there is basically this three cycle gap between them okay. previously it was a one cycle gap which meant that whatever was produced by u0 was uh, or uh, was consumed by u1 in the very next clock cycle now in this case once again what happens is corresponding to u equal to 0 i have that there is no input needed so this is clear enough but what about the other side when i want to do this tv equal to 1 right this corresponds to the feedback right but if i look at it what i'm saying is the u0 output has to be fed in at the correct time for v1 to execute and because of this gap over here right this two cycle delay that essentially corresponds to storing it for two extra clock cycles before i can get the data finally into the multiplexer for the correct computation right so in other words i need to make sure that u0 goes through two registers and then comes ready for v1 to use okay so you can see what has happened effectively the functionality was correct but in terms of the hardware i needed to put in those two extra registers if i did not have those registers the u0 output would have been used by some other instance of v and therefore the overall operation would not have been correct excuse me sir yes there is v input in that architecture sorry, sorry what is that what is the v input like uh, yeah so basically what i'm assuming is that whatever comes in over here is the input that is to say corresponding to this phase the multiplexer phase equal to 1 right because i know that tv equal to 1 whenever the multiplexer input select signal is equal to 1 right that is when the v is being computed okay so the way that you can look at it is this signal that is going in as the select signal over here is the phase okay so the input to the multiplexer that selects between which of the two uh, branches of the multiplexer is going into the compute unit that is the phase of the clock in this case it alternates between 0 and 1 and what i'm saying is whenever the phi is equal to 1 that is when the v is being executed by p that is what this tv equal to 1 means okay sir thank you now what happens if i extend this further right all that i'm saying is now i have w delays right so what does that w delays mean it just means that the dependency is from u0 to v w previously it was v1 now it is v w okay so that's all that w delays basically means 
and in terms of the directed uh, acyclic graph i have that this becomes w iterations later instead of one iteration later okay and once again i can look at i'm going to look at only this one condition tu is equal to 0 and tv is equal to 1 once again i have the situation that tu corresponds to or rather you know phase equal to 0 uh, corresponds to operating u and phase equal to 1 corresponds to v okay the dependencies are like this u0 to vw u1 to vw plus 1 and so on right now once again if i draw the architecture what i find is whenever phase is equal to 0 right this corresponds to tu equal to 0 and i don't need to provide any input because u is what is getting executed on the processor on the other hand when i go further over here i basically find that there is when phase is equal to 1 right i have a large number of registers right how many registers do i need over there i will need 2 w registers because I mean why the 2 because n is equal to 2 right in general I'll need n into w number of registers okay so what this is telling us in other words is if I had some kind of a simple architecture a simple system like this where there was just a pair of actors separated by one edge, uh, connected by one edge which has certain number of iteration delay elements on it and if I wanted to use this you know shared hardware architecture to implement it I would need to make sure that the output of u is saved for enough time so that it can be used by the correct execution of v. Okay, And these two w registers that I have over here are making sure that u, u0 is saved for two w clock cycles which is the time interval between u0 and uw right? so that vw sees it at the correct instant of time. 